today we are talking about a Prop 68 project to develop an eelgrass habitat suitability model for San Francisco Bay, where many of California's eelgrass restoration and mitigation projects have been conducted. To successfully restore eelgrass in California, we need to first pick the right places to restore, which this project will help practitioners do. Let's dive right in. The goal of this project is to recreate a habitat suitability model for eelgrass in San Francisco Bay. A previous model was created by Keith Merkel and Associates more than 10 years ago, but we know a lot more today about the conditions eelgrass needs to survive. The project is gonna be a partnership of our spatial science team at Audubon, California, led by Dan Orr, by Keith Merkel and Waylon Wilkerson at Merkel Associates, and also Kathy Boyer at San Francisco State University. So those three groups will be working together. The bulk of the modeling and science work will be done by Keith's team, um, but Kathy and Audubon will be convening a team of expert advisors, um, other experts in eelgrass and in climate change in San Francisco Bay to help us guide and review the model. So there'll be a lot of different people involved throughout the process. We want to make sure the product is useful to practitioners as in people that are actually doing restoration in the bay. So we want to involve them all along. I expect we will find new places where we could grow eelgrass, where maybe it historically grew a long time ago and the conditions are right now, or we might find places that eelgrass has never grown before, but the conditions are right. It's important with the loss of eelgrass and all of the ecosystem services that eelgrass provides that we sort of find all those possible places in the bay that could support eelgrass. Eelgrass restoration is expensive and it's hard, so it's important to try and identify the best places so we, we don't use resources that cause failure. It is not an easy plant to grow. I think that's gonna be really important in other bays where we know less about those habitats right now. You know, San Francisco Bay is fairly well studied. Um, other bays are going to be less studied, um, but would benefit from eelgrass restoration. And so I think as we're able to move this project out of San Francisco to other bays, it'll be really important to identify restoration priorities. The way we're creating the model is it's going to be online and publicly available. And that way, as new data sources come in, it'll be very easy to update the model um, and make it sort of open source. So, so anyone that needs to, to use it or wants to add to it will be able to do that. So the reason Audubon is interested in eelgrass is because we're interested in protecting estuaries around California because they're important to birds, other wildlife, and also the human communities that live around them. Estuaries are also highly threatened by development, um, by human use, and particularly by climate change. And sort of the under underpinning of a lot of estuaries is eelgrass. And so eelgrass I call the foundation of the estuaries. It really helps keep an estuary together. And the more Audubon thought about it, we thought about the sort of the foundation of estuaries is what you really need to protect. If you want a house with a good foundation, you need to protect that first. And eelgrass is really that foundation. It provides a nursery for fisheries such as herring and also dungeness crabs. It provides a major food resource for birds, both the eelgrass blades themselves, but also the eggs that are deposited on the eelgrass by the herring. Um, so a lot of birds specialize in feeding in eelgrass beds. So it creates this whole suite of services and they're really a very important part of the estuary. So the reason this work is exciting to me is a few years ago, I heard about surf scoter, which are a sea duck um, that winters in San Francisco Bay, that their numbers had declined by 50%. They're coming down from the boreal forest, they're coming into San Francisco Bay, and they're specifically feeding on herring eggs when the herring runs are happening. The number of herring in San Francisco Bay are declining. So there's not enough food for some of the birds that are coming in. It was really alarming to me to hear about these massive declines in this, this beautiful sea duck and, and everything else that it impacts along the way. Um, so I'm excited to try and figure out how we can help this ecosystem recover and um, we need to do that thinking about climate change because the bay is changing and so I'm just excited to be able to provide the science to the community so we can ensure we have a future in the bay for fish like herring and also for birds like the surf scoter. Estuaries are a nursery 
uh, for a lot of different fisheries that are putting food on people's tables. And um, so for that reason, it's really important that we continue to grow, restore, and support eelgrass and estuary ecosystems. I'd like to thank Andrea, Madeline, and Waylon for their contributions to this video and for their efforts on this Prop 68 project. As an eelgrass ecologist myself, I can't wait to put this model to good use. With that, I'm Kat Beheshti, California Sea Grant State Fellow with the Ocean Protection Council, signing off until next time, and as always, thank you so much for watching.